Hi there, welcome to this psychology topic video on biopsychology, this one looking at hemispheric lateralization, the essay writing and evaluation. This video is one of three, and in part one we examined the definitions and key research, and in part two we took a look at how to answer different exam questions on this topic. The essay question that we're going to focus on is outline and evaluate research into lateralization and or the split brain for 16 marks. As always, I stress the importance we're planning any essay, and in particular you should really remember the following points for this essay. You only have approximately 20 to 25 minutes to write the essay. You're therefore aiming for around the 500 words mark, of which about 175 words will be knowledge, 325 words evaluation. Now if I was going to plan or structure this essay, I would use the following structure. For my A1, I would start by defining what we meant by the term lateralization. I would then outline the key research by Sperry and Gazinga, focusing on the aim, method, results, conclusion. Then in my mind, I would have three evaluation points that I would include. I would draw on evidence that looks at multitasking. I would bring in a methodological criticism that focuses on the small sample size. This would also allow me to draw on my issues and debates in psychology and look at the ideographic approach. I would then bring on some further evidence, the idea that actually the right hemisphere can also be specialised for language and draw on a case study there. Now with that in mind, let's take a look at the outline uh, and what that might look like. So we might say that lateralization means that the two halves of the human brain each have functional specializations. The left is dominant for language and the right excels at visual motor tasks. The two hemispheres are connected through nerve fibers called the corpus callosum, which is why we can talk about things that are experienced in the right hemisphere. To investigate the functions of each hemisphere, Sperry and Gazinga used 11 patients whose corpus callosum had been severed, meaning that their hemispheres did not communicate. Patients were presented with images to either their left or right visual field. A range of tasks were used and patients had to respond with either their left hand, which is controlled by the right hemisphere, or their right hand, which is controlled by the left hemisphere, or simply reply verbally. It was found that patients could say what they saw in their right visual field, but not in their left. This is because the left hemisphere processes information in the right visual field. Because this is the hemisphere responsible for language, the patient could see what they saw. However, they could not say what they saw in the left visual field because that information is processed in the right hemisphere that cannot process language. The patient could, however, draw this image with their left hand as this task did not require language. Sperry argued that his studies gave considerable support to the argument for lateralization of function and that the left hemisphere specialises in language, while the right hemisphere specialises in tasks involving spatial analysis. So that would be our outline. So it's around the 175 words mark, exactly what we're looking to pack into a 16 mark essay. So that's the A1. We now need to take each of our A3 points in turn to see how we could structure effective evaluation. And let's start with this first piece of evidence on multitasking. So you might say that one of the main advantages of brain lateralization is that it increases our neural processing capacity, or in other words, the ability to multitask. We then bring in our evidence. So Rogers found that in domestic chicken, brain lateralization is associated with an enhanced ability to perform two tasks simultaneously. For example, the chickens could find food while being vigilant for predators. Using only one hemisphere to engage in a task would leave the other hemisphere free to engage in other functions. Okay. We then need to say why that matters, and this matters because it provides evidence for the advantages of brain lateralization and demonstrates how it can enhance brain efficiency for cognitive tasks. Okay. So there's our first evaluation point. Let's now take a look at this methodological criticism, and I said for this one I'm going to extend my evaluation and draw on one of the issues and debates to really improve the depth of my evaluation. So here you might say that unfortunately a lot of the research into lateralization is flawed because the split brain procedure is rarely carried out now, meaning that patients are difficult to come by. Such studies, and I'm really here referring to Sperry and Gazinga, often include very few participants, okay? And Sperry's research only included 11 patients, all of which had varying degrees of epilepsy. Now I'm going to bring in my issue debate really to extend this evaluation point. Consequently, some psychologists have argued that Sperry's research is really a collection of case studies that take an ideographic approach. Although the ideographic approach provides rich and interesting information in relation to individual cases, we're unable to create laws or apply the results as found in nomothetic research. Okay? 
Again, we need to conclude this, and this matters because any conclusions drawn are representative only to the individuals who had confounding physical disorders that made the procedure necessary. And this is problematic as such results cannot be generalised to the wider population. Okay, So really in-depth, detailed evaluation point there. Finally, let's take a look at this last evaluation point, the idea that language can actually also appear in the right hemisphere. Here we might say, however, it could be argued that language is not just restricted to the left hemisphere. Turk et al. Uh, discovered a patient, patient JW, that suffered damage to the left hemisphere, de de but developed the capacity to speak from the right hemisphere eventually leading to the ability to speak about information presented to either side of the brain. This matters because it suggests that lateralisation is not fixed and that the brain can adapt following damage to certain regions. Okay. So there you have it. I hope you found that summary useful and you've still got the summary on the screen there and it's provided you with both a clear and a logical essay structure and effective and meaningful evaluation. There you have it. In this video we covered essay writing for the hemispheric lateralisation topic. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.